Well, it may come as a shock to many listeners, but by the end of the year, Port Macquarie and the entire Hastings area will most likely be drinking fluoridated water. For years, residents have rejected the addition of fluoride to local water supplies, but now it seems the time has finally come. The Port Macquarie Hastings Council says it has completed design specifications for fluoride dosing, which will occur at Rosewood Road Reservoir site. And if all goes according to plan, fluoride will become part of life here on the mid-north coast from the end of 2009. In the studio tonight, I'm joined by a dentist who says our area is now only months away from a catastrophe. Dr. Karee Alexander and her husband, David Blackshaw, believe fluoride is not the magic dental medicine many claim it to be. Fluoride, they say, is in reality a poison which can cause a wide range of serious health problems. David and Karee, welcome to It's Time to Talk. Hi, Tim. Thank you for having us. Now, I just wanted to start off by asking this. Have I been brainwashed? Because I was under the impression that fluoride um, had, in fact, done wonders all around the world in reducing the instances of tooth decay, um, particularly among children. Now, a lot of people believe that, because I've been speaking to people in the week. Uh, a lot of people are under that impression, and a lot of medical experts say exactly the same thing. So, Karee, is it true or a deception? I'd say it's a deception, definitely. But, Tim, let me ask you this. How easy it is, is it for you to get an appointment with your local dentist when you need one? Busy people, you're saying? Yeah, I'm saying that fluoridation's been around in Australia for more than 50 years, and dentists are still very busy. Right. So, obviously, it's not working. That fact alone doesn't necessarily point to the failure of fluoride, does it? Because, I mean, we could also put forward the theory there that because fluoride is so effective, some parents simply rely on it too much and they're overseeing or they're not pursuing good dental hygiene with their kids. Is that a possibility as well? I'd say, I'd say yes, that there's a concept out there that uh, the government will look after me. It, we can feed our kids what we like. <laughs> we can give them Coke. They can eat junk. We don't have to take any responsibility because fluoride will fix it. But mm. the truth is it doesn't. Dental decay is it still exists. They mm. haven't eliminated it. And so isn't it time now to look back on 50 years of fluoridation and rethink the whole issue? I just want to make like get something really clear here. Do you think that fluoride has had any impact on, on decay at all? Like, Has it made mm. any positive inroads there? Personally, I don't think so. I don't believe so. Mm -hmm. The majority of dentists out there do believe that it has an effect, but they are influenced by statistics coming out of, say, the Dental Association, which I believe has a vested interest in the fluoride issue. Also, the, the studies show that even in non-fluoridated countries, dental decay has been decreasing at the same rate as in fluoridated countries. So there's plenty of studies out there showing that because most of Europe is not fluoridated. Okay, so where, where it's not fluoridated, the instances of tooth decay are still coming down as well? Definitely, and tooth decay was already coming down before the introduction of fluoridation. Tooth decay was definitely coming down, and that was due to improvement in, in oral hygiene measures, basically, and good diet, good nutrition. But I think what is kicking up is damage to teeth um, caused by fluoride, funnily enough, ironically enough. <laughs> it's called dental fluorosis. It's called fluorosis, yeah. Can mm -hmm. you tell us what exactly that is? Well, dental fluorosis is basically damage caused to um, the cells of the body which form the tooth enamel, and that has to occur at a time when the teeth are forming. And to have that occur, it, fluoride has to be ingested. It's not just from putting it on the teeth. You have to ingest it. You have to swallow it. So teeth are damaged, and, and fluorosis can range from mild to moderate to severe. Mild is that little spotty white spots that you might see occasionally on, on children's teeth. Um, moderate, it's more brown spotting, and severe is teeth go black. 
Mm. Yeah. Do you think that there are some parents possibly listening to this who notice on their kids' yeah, teeth for sure. these funny marks but have never actually worked out yeah. that it is fluorosis? Yeah. In fact, I was interviewed uh, by Prime TV a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, and we had a, a you know reasonably young uh, reporter interviewing. She was in her twenties. We had a cameraman there, and we had an assistant there, and all of those people had signs of dental fluorosis, which means that that they've received a toxic dose of fluoride. Mm. So this, you know, this is just indicative of, of the increase in dental fluorosis in the US. Something like 32% of children and teenagers have dental fluorosis. And in Australia, I'd say we're following the same trends. Try and compare fluorosis for me compared uh, with cavities. Like, what, okay. is it just as bad to have fluorosis as it is to get cavities? A lot of dentists will tell you it's just cosmetic. It's just a cosmetic issue. Right. Um, try telling that to somebody whose front teeth are covered in, in brown spots. Mm. Um, but it's also a sign of, of toxicity in the body. So if it's in the teeth, it's in the bones. Um, as far as... Does it turn into tooth decay or something like that, if that's what you're asking? Yeah, it, it's weakened areas of tooth enamel. So if somebody, say, has a high acidic diet or is bulimic or something like that, yeah, they're going to lose more tooth tooth enamel than they normally would because they've already got dental fluorosis. So it's it's definitely a weakening of the teeth. And this is a fluorosis is... Do you have any data to say how common it is these days? Well, as I said... The U.S. data is 32% of children. I think um, Ireland is the most fluoridated population in the world, and they're up in the 40s mm. for dental fluorosis. In my dental practice, over the last possibly 10 to 15 years, I've seen it definitely increasing. I've had 7-year-old children with dental fluorosis so bad that they didn't want to go to school because they were getting teased. Mm. So we had to make dental veneers for them. And, you know, that's expensive for parents as well. And in Those dental mind, veneers will eventually become crowns when mm. they're older. And so. in your mind, there's definitely no doubt that the correlation between fluorosis and, and fluoride in the water supplies of different towns yeah. is... It's, it's, very, it's, not is just, it's not just water fluoridation because there's so many other sources of fluoride as well. And oh, that's okay. what people don't understand. Mm -hmm. If we tested, you know the urine of 20 children in, in a non-fluoridated town like this, you'd find that they, was, they still had high levels of fluoride because any food they consume that's been processed, grown, um, you know, that had water added to it in any fluoridated area is going to contain fluoride. Toothpaste contains fluoride, and a lot of children are using toothpa fluoridated toothpaste way too, you know, at, at early ages when they can't spit out, so they swallow most of it. Mm. So there's another there's another source. Pesticides contain fluoride. Um, you know, so there's fluorochemicals words. in the Teflon coating in your nonstick pans. Mm. Fluoride is everywhere. It's it's an industrial byproduct. Basically, we're getting enough of it as it is by the sounds getting, of it. We're already getting overdosed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. even, our children are getting overdosed even before they introduce it. Mm -hmm. And there's no studies that have looked at the levels in our urine, in our blood, that we're already getting. And shouldn't those studies be done before they decide whether it's appropriate to add it into the water? Mm. Yeah. It's David, can I ask you, I was in preparation for this, I've been talking to people that I work with, people that I come across in the community. So many people are unaware that the Hastings is about to have this fluoride added by the end of the year to our water supplies. A lot of people said to me, oh, that's been going on for years, they'll never pass it through. The fact is, it's coming. Do you think that there are a lot of people who would be surprised to hear that? Uh, we've started this campaign a few weeks ago, and what we've discovered was that exact fact, that most of this region has absolutely no idea that it is coming. The ones that believe... Uh, fluoride is possibly a good thing for them actually have no clue whatsoever what it is now we did some surveys and we, we talked to dentists we talked to gps we talked to chemists we talked to naturopaths and we talked to the average person on the street 99.5 percent of those people have absolutely no clue what fluoride is where it comes from and what is being added to the water what the listeners out there need to understand is that the fluoride that's used in a dental chair is not the same product that they're about to put in the waterway. The product they're about to put in the waterway through uh, council water manager, we, we've confirmed this, 
the product is actually coming from Incitec Pivot. This product is out of Geelong and it will be trucked up from their phosphate refining process. Now phosphates are generally the products that they use for fertilizers. Now in that process, now phosphates come from the same level in the, in the, in the soil that uranium comes from and in that processing the product will actually leach out and create and and drive other heavy metals and toxins out of it as it's been as it's been drawn out to create the phosphate. Are you saying it's a waste product then? Yeah, exactly that. What what they do is that through the process of of mining this product and refining the product